welcome to the second episode of OT Talk. We're broadcasting from the Health Science Campus at the University of Southern California. I'm Carly Wasserman. And I'm Melissa Concha. This is actually part one of a series of conference shorts that we're making. This episode is going to be all about the exhibition at the conference put on by the Occupational Therapy Association of California. This expo took place at a huge exhibit hall at the Pasadena Convention Center, where there were tons of booths about different recruiters and products that were coming out for OTs and posters in the back about research. There were awesome giveaways. (laughs) Tons of candy. And food. And pens. And stress balls. And more stress balls. (laughs) And And more more candy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we actually got some great interviews from different people offering different information. So let's take a listen. I'm Peter Lancelotti, and I'm with Blue Marble Game Company. We develop games for uh, rehabilitation. Uh, We are currently offering a game called Treasure of Belle Island, which was funded by the Department of Defense for helping uh, soldiers and veterans with mild traumatic brain injury, hence the name Treasure of Belle Island. Right after that, Peter directed me over to a colleague of his to find out a little bit more. My name is Bonnie Kennedy, and I'm the Chief Science Officer at Blue Marble Game Company. I'm an occupational therapist, and I'm also an occupational scientist. I got my PhD at the University of Southern California in occupational science. Um, What am I doing here? Um, (laughs) I'm um, showing people the concepts behind the games that we're developing. We are a very young company. We've only been um, working full-time for about 18 months. So we've released our first game for the conference. Um, It's Treasure of Bell Island. And um, it is a 30-hour outpatient home program for mild traumatic brain injury. Gotcha. So what is it that the game does that's different than another game? Okay. Um, There are um, brain games of all sizes, shapes, um, and colors, and those brain games tend to present a single skill out of its context. So you're only practicing one thing. The games that we make are contextualized and linked to activities of daily living. For example, in Treasure of Bell Island, there's 30 hours of gameplay. During the game, you have to make sure your team is fed. You have to gather food, make sure that the people are in the same area of the island so that they can eat the food you've collected. You have to shelter them every night, and they lose energy if you don't feed them and shelter them, and they'll never get off the island if you don't take care of them. So you have to explore the island, discover how to get off the island, and keep everybody alive and healthy. So that's the executive functions that are challenged. The mini games that you play in order to catch the food and build the shelter are um, challenging visual perceptual skills, orientation in space, visual discrimination, um, sequencing, um, associative memory, (laughs) divided attention, I've probably missed some, but we have specific scores for each of those skills based on task analysis used in occupational therapy and the literature on how um, instruments that measure those skills have calculated those skills in the past. So we're definitely evidence-driven. Even the fact that the game is 30 um, hours of play is driven by the evidence that successful outpatient cognitive rehabilitation programs run for about six weeks, three to five times a week. So, so basically, on top of the scores that the player gets, say you've gotten six jewels, you have this many thousand points, you get, as a therapist on the back end, more information than that? Oh, yes, the back end. Um, It's a cute name for the clinician's database. It's a web application that'll be available sometime after Thanksgiving. I just um, sent the formulas off to the database designer um, for 
uh, response speed, associative memory, and about 12 other <laughs> scores um, that are typically measured in um, programs that treat mild cognitive impairment. Those scores are then um, plotted on a graph of the therapist's choice. So it could be a line graph or a bar graph, whatever makes sense for that person's context. That graph of the patient's um, progress can be um, saved by the therapist as an Excel file or a PDF and placed right into her clinical notes. Awesome. So you can say, as your OT homework, go play this game, come back, and then OT then has all of this information about we need to work on cognitive processing in this way, in this way, in this way. Exactly. You can identify strengths and weaknesses. One of the things that I insisted on is standardizing the scores. So we have Z scores and change scores so that you can plot a patient's relative strengths and their relative weaknesses in order to prioritize your therapy goals. Awesome. And you were saying before that it maybe just hasn't been recognized and officially taken on as that, you know, video games are a daily athlete patient now, so... Oh, yes. Um, video games are definitely an activity of daily living. Um, I can't quote the statistic off the top of my head, but the majority of people walking around today play video games. And the majority of people wheeling around play video games. Um, and uh, my grandson spends more hours playing video games than I care to admit. Ac video games are definitely an activity of daily living. So maybe you've just tapped into a magic, a magic, you know, medium to get people motivated. It's definitely a motivating um, modality, and that's what it is. It's nothing scary that OT hasn't done before. This is a treatment modality like any other. We've been using games, arts, crafts since the turn of the last century. <laughs> okay, so in a sense, this is very, very old, but it's, it's new. <laughs> it's very OT, it's, and, and that's the sense in which it's old. It's, it's very OT. Great. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Oh, you're welcome, Alyssa. Hi, my name is Alana Harvey, and this is Russell Simpkins here. And we're both with Forward Day, a company that has produced a product called Shower Bay. It's a portable shower that allows for wheelchair access and can be set up in any room of the house. So the benefit is you don't have to go through the cost um, or and time that a remodel can take. And um, it instantly sets up and allows for the safety of always rolling in. Instantly meaning? Meaning about 10 minutes, actually. No wow. tools required. And um, it snaps together. There's about seven main pieces. They all connect together. And you can roll into this amazing shower enclosure that gives you the normalcy of a shower. Versus a sponge bath. Yeah, we tried to bridge the gap between a sponge bath and a full-scale remodel. So for people that are renting and unable to do a home modification, or maybe they're just rehabbing an injury and don't want to go through the full-scale remodel, they're able to still have a safe bathing. I'm going to be like this for a few months. I don't need to change my whole house. Exactly. Or maybe they have a relative or loved one come and stay with them, and you know they don't want to do the whole modification of their own home, but still want to provide the safety and relaxation of a daily shower. It kind of looks just like a really tall jacuzzi. Exactly. Yeah. Spa-like. Yes, spa-like. Very <laughs> relaxing. It's also safe for the acting caregiver, whether it's, you know, a home health helping, because it eliminates the transfer of lifting them, and you know, over a tub or up the stairs to a, to a bathing station. So those were just a couple examples of the vendors that were there, but there were tons of recruiters that represented the spectrum of OT practice. Um, we're going to finish up with a conversation that I had with a participant that I ran into at the expo. My name is Rel Santos, and I own a home health agency here in Pasadena. Okay, entrepreneur OT. Uh, I, I try. Awesome. And where did you go to school? I, I went to school at USC, right and I got my, that's my alma mater. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So, what brings you out to the conference? You know, I've, I've been in OT for, for a long time, 
and I never ever have been involved with um, going to conferences uh, with my um, with OTAC or AOTA. It wasn't only until about a year ago when I heard Dr. Florence Clark talk that I realized that I needed to become part of, of something greater than I am myself. And that's why I decided that's to start awesome. coming out to, that came out to the conference. So what is it about what Florence Clark said? Like, what was the tipping point that made you realize that, you know, this is something worth doing? Florence, Dr. Dr. Clark had an analogy. The analogy was that we are all parts of a, of a picture. We're all pixels in a picture. And I realized that I needed to be a pixel oh, and, I, and make a difference. Picture. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so what have you been enjoying about the conference so far? Everything, everything. I, I, uh, I'm staying here at the at the at the hotel, um, but I enjoy the. Yesterday, I went to the leadership um, uh, uh, sessions, and uh, throughout the day, I had a great time meeting a lot of other uh, other other OT leaders. Uh, in the evening, uh, of course, when the USC band came out and played last great. night, it was just amazing. Uh, today, the posters. They were, I've never seen posters. I know that that's. I just ignorant on, on my end. I, I went to each poster. I probably spent about. 15 minutes at each poster, and I went to all of them. Yeah? Yeah. So what were some of the ones that stood out, or were they all great? Do you remember? Well, I, I really enjoyed the ones that deal with my my uh, my population I, I work with, which is the ger- geriatric population, so I, I really enjoyed um, the one on, on the, um, the, uh, the, the the use of slings uh, for patients with CVAs. I enjoyed the, uh, the family-centered uh, education by the Department of Health, which was great. Um, yeah. But they were all just, they, you could tell all the work they put into their posters was just phenomenal. Right. So, have you been to an OTAC conference before? Uh, this is my first. This is my first and I'm enjoying it a lot. And you're going to come again? Definitely. In fact, I'm, now I'm planning on going to the AOTA one in, uh, in San Diego. Awesome. Next, next, in, uh, I think it's in April. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great that it's in, in the state. Well, it's in the state, exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, is there anything else about your experience so far that you've been... It's really stood out. You know what? I think, if anything, the, the fact that I've gotten to meet a lot of people. Um, I was just sitting here eating lunch, and a, a young lady from uh, the, the therapeutic specialist company, we just sat down and started talking, and she made me realize how small a world we're, we're, we're in. She, she happens to know one of my, my, my ex-CODAs that used to work with me, and she is now working for her. Wow. And she lives in San Diego, and you know we're here in LA, so it's just it's such a small world in, in, in therapy. Yeah. So yes, I'm enjoying just meeting people. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. We'd like to give a special thanks to all of our podcast contributors, the team from Blue Marble, also the people from Forward Bay, and Ralph Santos. Also, if you are interested in getting the full tracks of the music that we've included today, it's all Creative Commons music that we got from ccmixter.org, and we'll have a list of those tracks on our webpage under the Division website. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We'll have more conference shorts for you soon, more about OTAC, as well as the AOTA Student Conclave. Alyssa will be traveling to the conference this next week, and she will have plenty of updates for you all. Hopefully exciting stuff from Columbus, Ohio, and you can actually find more information about that at our webpage, which is the USC OT Division website under the News and Events tab. Exactly. So look for us there, and we hope to entertain you guys again soon.